for the next hour or so. I'm delighted to say that this is episode uh, 10. Uh, so the previous nine weeks, we've spoken to just over 20 current students and graduates of DCU to give you a unique insight into the university and all of what it, what it has to offer. So today, hopefully you'll be no different. I see Sinead from Hilton Society is waiting patiently and I'm going to ask Sinead to come in in just a minute. But before I do, I just want to let you know that we have plenty of other resources that are online. Every Wednesday we are here, albeit this is the last episode for semester one until after Christmas where we'll, we'll be bringing you much, much more. So don't worry, we'll be back um, with this particular um, series after Christmas too. But just to let you know, there's plenty of other resources online. So anything that we do mention today, um, sits with and sits part of an overall picture. So if you do need more information, you want blogs, you want podcasts, you want to hear more on social media um, and across our, so all of our social media channels. And um, my colleague Sinead uh, does a great work, does great work on all of our social media channels. So plenty of more information. Uh, before I invite uh, Sinead in, because she's pa patiently waiting, as are a couple of guests that are listening today, just a couple of quick things, uh, housekeeping. There is a Q&A on your screen. If you want to ask a question as we're speaking, um, I know Sinead will be delighted to take any questions. If you want to ask a question, please just ask it in the chat function. I don't have to read out your name, so don't worry if you're um, conscious of that. And as I said, I'll do my very best um, to to put them to Sinead. Uh, before I do invite Sinead across into the room um, and get going on our conversation, just to remind you as well that the university has plenty on offer um, in terms of what you might need. So today we're going to talk about two courses, um, but there is plenty more courses. And as I said, there's plenty of information online. So I'm going to promote Sinead across and hopefully technology will um, be my friend for the next couple of seconds and work for me properly. Sinead, as how Hello. are you? How are you? Hi, I'm you good, I'm good. How are you? Did you enjoy my uh, studio? Yeah, the background, the actual studio. <laughs> it's nice. It's nice. I like it's, it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> I had the communications girls on a few weeks ago, and something similar happened, and um, they were disgusted oh, with right, me, I see. to say the least. Yeah. So. Oh well, uh, sure. I mean, what I know, can you do? I, have to do it all live. <laughs> yeah, I know. There you go. Well, that's what. That's what I mean. Uh, how are you keeping? I'm good. I'm good. Working away. I'm doing a master's now this year in DCU, so kept busy. Um, so I think it's a good year that I've got my head down doing the study, doing the work. But yeah, I'm happy out. How has hybrid online learning been so far? It's been 100% online for me now. I haven't been on campus at all. It's, you know, it was a challenge at the beginning, but I, I think I've gotten used to it now that I enjoy it. And it's, there's definitely pros and cons. So you just kind of have to focus on the pros and you know keep on carrying on there's not much you can do about it so I think the one thing that I miss the most about on campus is just the opportunity to meet people and you know make friends especially when you are starting a new course you know I feel I feel awful sorry for the first years who are trying to come in but DCU is doing a great job um with the SU trying to get people to you know make friends online and they're organizing a few bits so it, they are doing a good job and you know hopefully next semester things will kind of get a bit more social and in person but uh, we just have to kind of keep on, I suppose, at the yeah. moment and all the rules. But uh, yeah, online learning, it's grand. It's grand. It's good. Yeah. It has, I mean, yeah, it has good uh, pros and cons. I think I speak, I was speaking with a couple of other students the last few weeks who are saying pretty much similar, loads of opportunity, very accessible, yeah. the way in which it's done, relatively um, easy to, but then obviously the social side of it and the, the other side face to face mm -hmm. where it's not possible and um, so informal very informal today in terms of trying to discover find out a little bit more about undergrad life and journey and health and society in general i know yeah. lots um you, you've got up to lots about in and outside the course i might get into both the classroom stuff but also then yeah. inside the classroom so i know nothing about and there's a few people watching here today and listening live and by the way this goes up on uh um, recorded so there'll be people watching this back but um health and society what what mm -hmm. is it all about what did you do in it and how did you find it overall I honestly I loved it so I just graduated so I did my three years and um, finished there I got my little cert in the post a few weeks ago congratulations um thank you very much <laughs> hopefully an in-person graduation will be held next semester but look we'll keep our fingers crossed um no I honestly I loved it I loved the the modules how there was just such a wide variety of things you could study within the course um, and it really I felt it really suited me and obviously when I met my friends in the course it really suited them as well so it was really good to meet people who you know were in the same boat as me uh, especially like from the leaving circle because I had a I didn't really know what I wanted to do in, in the it, while I was in my leaving circle so I suppose I'll kind of start that story on how I even got to health and society so I 
initially thought I wanted to do communications or something within media. So I always, I knew DC was kind of, is well, really well known when it comes to that sort of thing. Um, so I've been to a few open days around the country, you know, felt okay about it. But then I had heard so much about DCU that I made sure that I was going to go to the open day. So I went and I actually saw one of the girls talking about this on the podcast or on the video before saying that I just, not to sound super cliche, but when I went, I just felt really at home in DCU and I just really, really liked it. And I went to the talk and I was really interested in the different media courses. But as the year went on, I kind of shifted my focus on something more sciencey. I kind of wanted to do a science degree. And I was, I honestly was raging because I was like, oh my God, like I'm not going to go to DCU anymore. I'm going to have to find somewhere else. And um, I was online and I was on the phone to my friend and I was like, oh, I just wish DCU did a mix with, of a course. Then they did like a something to do with health because I really liked biology and I really liked home ec and I really liked history. Something a bit of sociology, you know, and as I was looking down through the courses, I just saw health and society and I almost like dropped the phone. I was like, wait, what is this course? So I clicked in and this was when, yeah, it was when I was in Leaving Cert. And then uh, I got in touch with the lecturers and they were all really helpful on email. And yeah, that's how I made my decision. But I really, really enjoyed it. So as I said, I was initially interested in doing something in media. But the thing with DCU is when I was in first year, I even though I wasn't doing a media course, I still had the opportunity to get involved with media things with the um clubs and society so there's the mps society so i got to like get involved with everything and you know even if you're not studying something academically you can still expand your skills and get that experience on dc which i was really really happy about because i kind of was like oh my god i felt so that i was you know cutting off media forever but i wasn't you know i still got to experience that and um see what was to offer so yeah that's kind of where uh, how I got to health society and got to DCU um, but the course itself um, I mean in terms of the class sizes the class size is, is quite small and uh, maybe between 30 and 40, 30 to 40 students depending on the year and you know it was mainly continuous assessment which I really liked and I feel like a lot of people do prefer that than having all the pressure on exams I feel like after leaving sir I just needed a break from just exam focus so now there was exams but not as many, you know, it was mainly CA. But um, yeah, there was a bit of group work. There was a lot, most, uh, you know, mostly individual work, but there was group work. There was practical based things, you know, and finally you have to do a health action project. Um, and then in first year, we also, um, for one of the modules, we had to undertake a, a certain form of volunteering. So me and a few of the girls, we did this uh, soup run in, in, t in Dublin city centre so that was a great experience you know getting to do that and see the real implication um that these societal issues have on society especially you know on our doorstep so there was there's so much you can do and I, I think with my course as well um what you put in you really get out I feel like everyone says that but it's true um so there definitely is a nice blend between your core science modules and then your kind of sociology um, modules. So I feel like anybody who's interested in that, it, it's the course for them. And especially if somebody wants to go on and to do a health related profession, but they're not quite sure what profession, it's a great starting point. So, um, you know, now that we've all graduated, I was, I've was i been catching up with some people from the course and a lot of the girls and the lads were all kind of saying like, do you know what they wanted to do, what they thought they wanted to do at the beginning through studying the three years they realized oh I actually want to do this you know I'm doing a master's now in HR and at the beginning I thought I wanted to do something completely different and it's led me to my master's so yeah I'm really really thankful for it and everyone seemed to really enjoy it and it's brought them to where they needed to be. A couple of things because I, I want to unpack one or two things I try to unpack one or two things there but one of them in particular is around research open days so does people mm -hmm. The likelihood is people watching this now or people watching this back on record will be in this CAO kind of mindset. Yeah. What will I choose? Open days, researching, talking to students, mm -hmm. lectures and so on. Depending on obviously COVID and everything else, physical open days may or may not be there, but hopefully at some point we'll be able to do it safely in, in some way. Yeah. Open days were one of a number of places you did research. Was it online, social media? Where else did you do, the re do your research? Well, I definitely started just from like, chatting to people like to friends and to you know uh, I have older sisters so you know they're friends and it kind of started from there and then um I wasn't aware when I was in when I was in school that I 
that colleges had student ambassadors and they had people you could actually talk to. I actually didn't realize how welcoming, you know, different colleges were and how welcoming DCU was. Um, so definitely the open days. If I could go back in time, I would definitely tell myself to go to every open day, everywhere, just to get the feel for the colleges, you know. Um, and I, I think I went to DCU twice. I went there for, we went to see Hamlet when I was in fifth year, I think, for our English. And then I said, okay, I need to come back and do an actual open day because we got to have a look around, but I wanted to come back and do a real one. Um, so definitely, if I was to go back in time, I would, you know, utilize the services of, you know, talking to student ambassadors and not just the lecturers. So it's great to get a student perspective. But when I was in uh, Leave Insert, my main mode of research was online and was the open day. But I wish I knew about the ambassadors. I, you know, I almost was too scared to email. Them. I saw something about online and I thought, oh no, I can't, I can't message them. You know, who am I? But I didn't. Now I definitely understand that it's, you definitely just go for it. And just for those that are, just to bring that point up to speed, so you can actually log on right now to our UniBuddy platform where mm-hmm. student ambassadors are actually in behind that and you can chat to them or depending on if we have campus tours, uh, as you know, Sinead, we, we do, um, our student ambassadors do campus tours and tell you about yeah. the college and the, the place and the, the location and the courses and so on so if you are listening live or watching this back uh, do get in touch uh, anytime student help at dcu.e just want to remind people there's a Q&A function as well if you have a question as we're talking uh, please do ask it in another thing that I want to try unpack that you said was and you're doing the um the stuff in Dublin city centre and you're getting your practical experience did you come into the course knowing it was kind of a mixture of practical and theory did you have that awareness or as you went through the program all these different things started to become opportunities it became apparent did you have an awareness of the practical side as well? Um, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't have that awareness that there was very, that there was a practical um, based module. Uh, I knew that there was no placement as such, as you know, in business, you have your year long placement. I knew that just I got that information from uh, chatting to the lecturers like on email and at the open day. But so I was pleasantly surprised. Um, it was I think it was in second semester. They might have changed it since that we had that module. Um, but on I checked online you can get there's a link to on the health and society page you can look at the module so I got to see what was C- CA and I got to see like you know that there was it wasn't a very exam focused module that it was mainly CA so that kind of I knew that going into the course but as regards to the practical based um side of things I didn't know and then you know when I was going into it I wasn't thinking about my final year I wasn't thinking, oh, what will I do my dissertation on, you know, when I was in Leave and Surf. But when I got into final year, my, I shouldn't say dissertation, my health action project was, you know, it was very practical based. Like I had to, I didn't have to, but I decided to hold a talk on campus uh, where students came and I had to put posters up, you know, on my, around my topic and, you know, raise awareness. So that was very practical, you know. And we also had a research um, methods module in second year, and we had to conduct like interviews um, with just fellow students. And yeah, so it was a lot more practical than I thought, but which is which is great. Like I was really happy with that. So, but no, to answer your question, I didn't actually know about it when I was going into the course. So to summarize, and then might just speak a little bit more about modules, as in specific modules and what's involved. So three yeah. course uh, class size wasn't too big. You're based on Glasnevin campus. Yes, yes. So for those that are and the class aware, size, I, go on. yeah. Sorry, I was going to say that um, I loved how the class was small because it was like everybody knew each other. Lectures all knew you by your first name. You know, it really wasn't like a daunting experience. And um, for some modules, we were with nursing students, but even at that, it still wasn't like a huge lecture hall. Like I always felt comfortable to ask a question in class, you know, that I wasn't with hundreds and hundreds of people. And I was like, oh God, I can't raise my hand here. So yeah, but we remain a hundred percent on um, Glass 11 campus. So for those, um, thank you for that. For those that aren't aware, we have a number of campuses. So depending on the program that you're studying in DCU, you could be based on the John Condra campus, which is primarily education. There's an All Hallows campus, which provides a bit of um, educational ac- academia as well and then Glasnevin which is what we're talking about now is another campus where the uh, health and society as is lots of other courses and um, something that always comes up as a small thing but hours a week roughly speaking contact hours a week um, versus then work you, you're expected to do in your own time a rough estimation in that 
the actual hours a week that we had, they were kind of similar all throughout the four, the three years, I mean. Um, it was between, in around, I'm going to call it 15 hours a week of actual lectures, maybe between 12, depending on the week. Um, and then, God, hours after that, I, I don't know, I couldn't say, like, as in, I would, the way I would usually do my day, you know, I'd go to college, and then me and my me and my friends and me and my classmates, we would usually go for lunch on campus and then we'd go to the library and we'd spend hours in the library. But it wasn't like, you know, sometimes I'd be on the phone to uh, my parents. They'd be like, Jesus, you've been, you've been in the library all day. And I'm like, it doesn't feel like I was in the library all day because I was, you know, we were going for breaks and stuff. But um, it was I do. That's the main thing that I miss, how social stood. I, I found the library was almost like a nice place to go I enjoyed going there I'm sure you, you, you hear that around everywhere it was a real social place everybody was in the library so you have to be careful not to get too distracted in the library you know um, in the in the area where you're allowed to speak up but I couldn't put a number on the actual hours but um you know in first and second year it was quite moderate you know it was just you, you kept on going but then in final year obviously there was a, a lot more um work needed but nothing too nothing too strenuous you know but um, you could, yeah, it was, it was, it was good. You know, I, I managed to keep up. I worked one day a week, so I still managed to keep up a small, you know, part-time job. I know some of my friends who who had part-time jobs that was, you know, a longer part-time job. They they struggled a bit, but um, yeah, that's we. I, I, I it was very social on campus and going to the library and all that. So it did kind of eat up a lot of hours, but um, it was good. It was good. Talk to me a little bit about, because you mentioned there talking to your folks, um, coming, because obviously we have students from all over Ireland, all over the world that come to DCU. Um, some come from just outside of Dublin, some come from well beyond outside of Ireland, etc. Talk to me a little bit about that and the journey, if you can recall, kind of coming into DCU, how you're feeling, nervous, or how you settled in. And then I guess the, the side of it of making friends and how did that kind of all come about, albeit it kind of takes a couple of weeks to materialise. Yeah. Okay. So, I I am um, I'm from Mayo, so I it's a I feel like you know Dublin to Mayo. It's a bit of a distance. Getting the train, getting the bus, it's a couple hours away, or driving, or whatever. So in first year, um, I was lucky that I knew a few people from my school, uh, and just from people that I already knew that were going to be on campus and going to be studying. And you know, no, I didn't know anybody in my course. Now I was completely one hundred percent on my own there. So, but. Most people um, from my school kind of stayed local. They either went to colleges that were around Mayo, uh, kind of stayed in the West. Um, but I was nervous, but I just the in the what the orientation was very was really well implemented. I felt that you know we had icebreakers and stuff, and I'm still friends with one one of the girls that I just happened to be sitting next to at um, one of our talks in T101. I'm still friends with her. Like, you know, I was talking to her yesterday. It's funny how things work out because, you know, but um, I think a lot of people comment on this, that DCU is a, while it's a big campus, it's also a very small campus. You know, you, everybody seems to almost know everyone and you see a lot of friendly faces everywhere. So um, it's definitely a very homely place. So after the first few weeks, you know, I was completely settled in, but I really found that like getting, having to get yourself involved with the, um, the clubs and societies was really, really helpful to make friends in, in making friends. And even in second year, I joined different, uh, societies that I wasn't involved with in first year and made more friends, you know, so it's not just about in first year that you make your friends then and that's it. It's always a, you know, a process. Um, but yeah, it was honestly very smooth. I was surprised. I was a lot more, I was nervous, but I, sh I don't think I should have been as nervous as I, as I was, you know. Yeah, yeah. I often, and even as I was a student myself in DC, recall, I think everybody's nervous. All the three odd mm. tales of people are nervous. So sometimes you forget that uh, you're definitely not the only one. So you're happy enough. So for, looking back now, you're happy enough. You chose the right course. You're settling in the course itself. Uh, you're finding enjoyable. Class sizes are great. They're not too mm -hmm. big because you get to know everybody, etc. So if yeah. we could for the last couple of minutes, because these are there's only a snapshot in time, but the last few minutes is a little bit about outside the SU, uh, clubs and societies, opportunities that came your way and what you got involved with outside of the program that kind of complemented inside the program. Yeah, okay. So the first thing that I, you know, at the, uh, the, the SU hold this big 
function hall where they had all of the societies and clubs and stuff and I joined so many <laughs> like so many that I joined but um the one thing that I really wanted to get involved with was uh like the trips so the surf for example the first trip that I went on was with the surf society and um, there was a on the weekend the bank holiday weekend in October um just a girl in my course who I wasn't even that good friends with at the time I just was sitting next to her in a class and I was like oh they're doing this uh, thing they're going to Bundoran for a weekend like looks looks kind of fun and she was like let's go so we just went signed up and paid her money it wasn't expensive because the uh, it's subsidized by the SU and we just had such a ball and I'm still friends with people that I made on that that trip so there's loads of um now I was lucky that I lived nearby like I lived in Shinoan so I was able to just pop over to campus and you know go to the different events because there was loads of fundraiser events like I remember in that October uh DCU dance did the full Monty and we all went to that like that was a great event and uh rag rumble and stuff but um I also what other trips did I go I went on loads of things like in second year um when I kind of had my core group of friends we all went on the DCU snow sports uh ski trip which was amazing like that was like the highlight of our year and then we went on again the next year you know became a bit of a tradition um and then you know I went to some balls there was the ANF ball just went to just did loads of things but you really do have to put yourself out there and you have to sign up to these things you know some things I was doing on my own um also in first year me with the health and um the health society which I didn't even think that there could be a club and society just dedicated to health uh we went to Budapest, Budapest for, for three nights um, and I rounded up a load of the girls from my course to go so I think there was like 10 of us who went but um it was brilliant but um you know, something that I kind of wish, I wish I got myself involved more with some of the societies. Like I wish I got myself involved with like the scuba, the scuba diving society. I regret not doing that, but anyway, it'll, t- it'll come in time. But yeah, loads of things that I did and encouraged everyone. Like um, the quest, I didn't do the quest myself, but loads of my friends did the quest. That looked like such crack, you know, with ESOC. Um, but yeah, there's definitely so much. There's I love the emphasis on club and societies in DCU because you really can you know try loads of different things and enjoy it you know and um, the so obviously you get the opportunity as in the the immediate trip abroad or snow side yeah yeah before, and, and then I guess if now and you're only speaking a little bit about somebody you met um it, it obviously gives you an opportunity to build up your network and, and you never know when yeah. that person might become helpful for you in a job or in a oh yeah in a situation yeah. so and we're nearly at the end. So I think you said it already, but the, one of the questions I always ask um, kind of towards the end of a conversation is if you're looking back and you, you've probably answered it already, but I'll, do, I'll say it again. But if you're looking back, anything you do differently, anything jump to mind now that people are lis- listening now where you are a few years ago, um, anything jump to mind? I just wish I could go back and like, I wish I could be back in first year and, you know, just do it again. Um, but the only thing that I would say is I would just try to do more, not get so bogged down and be like oh I'll, I'll look I don't know what people think of me if I do this I just wish I did more so um that's that's I that's what I would say I wish I would do more like you know even in first year I was on campaign teams for people who were running for the SU something that I'd never done before and it was really fun you know it's just a completely different experience all these different things but uh, if I was to go back in time and start again it was definitely just to get myself involved more because you definitely have time you know so that's that's just to do more really it, it's funny I, i've asked that like pretty much every week to everybody that's been on and it, it doesn't always come yeah. back with i wish i would have got involved more but it, it's a variation of it so so i guess if you are yeah. listening watching now live or watching it back um yeah sound advice we didn't and we, well, we might have another minute or so we didn't even get a chance yet to ask about being a student ambassador what is that and what do you do or what did you do or well, continue to do because you're, you're still doing it yeah well obviously it's very different this year because it's online but um you know like that was something that I came to college didn't think that I'd be getting a job on campus you know so when that opportunity came around I just jumped at it and had to I because I remember my very first day when I was doing orientation in first year I was there was an ambassador and she brought me her name was Sarah she brought me to one of the uh one of the rooms and I thought to myself how doing like are you are you and I said it to her I said are you working or like what's the story here and she explained it to me she was like sure the applications go out in in uh, May I think and then I just kept it in my head and then I got the email I said oh my god I'm gonna do this and then I was working with her the next year you know we were working together so um I've loved it you know it's it's, um, that's another thing that I found I just met so many people through like sometimes my friends be like oh how do you know um 
so and so and I'm like oh I met them when I was working you know uh doing student doing the student ambassador stuff but great experience you know on my CV as well you know employers love love when they see that because I don't you know I didn't you don't I don't get the opportunity to give tours or give talks to so many people um that often so it's been a really good experience um and I'm so happy that I got to do it again this year while I'm doing a master's yeah, no, it's great to have you back. And for those that are listening and you do find yourself eventually coming to DCU, keep it in mind. Um, yeah, definitely do. Today will tell you, you get to meet people, you know, from all over, be it the president of Ireland, the president of the mm-hmm. university, um, lecturers, guests that we have on campus. You obviously do campus tours, you talk to students, parents, run events, you pretty much do everything, um, I, I would imagine. Um, across. Yeah, it's really nice talking to, especially I find, I find talking to parents, you know, making them feel at ease if I see them at the open day. Like I really, it's, quite rewarding in that sense or even if you come across a uh, student prospective students who are you know a little bit nervous or you know I I, I really enjoy it in that type of thing making you know because I really appreciated when I met student ambassadors when I was in their position so it's, it's nice to do be in like switch roles and be in that position yeah yeah and give back and give back you do and you all do to be fair all the student ambassador team and um, do some great work with, with all the prospective students and parents and teachers and well beyond that uh, we're just out of time I know these are only a snapshot in time so you only literally got the cover but hopefully it gave a sense to those listening live and watching this back on record um, a sense of Sinead and her journey at any time because I, I know Sinead you've done this plenty of time at any time if you do have a question uh, get in touch with student help at dcu.ie we'd be more than happy to help facilitate the answer to the question or in lots of cases we often put students in touch with students from the programs that they're looking to go to so uh, really just a thanks and an appreciation for your time thank you very much so yes um anyone listening or watching back don't hesitate to just send me an email and i'll get back to you as soon as i can with any questions much appreciated oh, yeah. we'll see you soon and stay safe okay. have a good christmas too thank you you too bye-bye see you Jeanette. So while we're just handing over or changing over, should I say, to um, our second speaker of the day, because I see Mary has been patiently waiting in the waiting room and she's extremely busy. So I don't want to uh, take too much more of her time. Um, we are going to speak now, um, just before I invite Mary into the room, uh, to Mary Walsh from Science Education, which will give us a unique insight to um, the course, obviously, but also Mary's uh, journey and what she has got up to over the last number of years. There is a Q&A function on your screen as well. So do bear that in mind as we're speaking. I won't read out your name. It is anonymous. Um, if you want to ask a question to either me or Mary, uh, please do so. We're more than happy to um, uh, take any questions. And uh, the more we get in, the better. Um, so I'm going to promote Mary across on my screen. And hopefully technology um, will work for us. Next couple of seconds, I can see it come onto my screen. Hello. <laughs> Hello there. How's things? One of, if not the busiest person in dcu uh, i'm probably close to it yeah but <laughs> and you're yeah. making um as you always do to be fair making time for us um and those watching listening right now and watching this back and record what has you so busy explain um so i'm in my final year of college which is enough i think to have most people busy but i decided to take on pretty much a full-time job at the same time as well so um yeah i'm i'm a uh, I'm surviving, um, but it'll be worth it because I'll have so much experience under my belt. It sounds exactly like you to take on a full-time job while you're in your final year, or your busiest year of college. Look. <laughs> but you're well able for it. Yeah, exactly. Um, a question came in. I'll get to that in a moment to the person that asked that question. Thank you, and do keep them coming in. Um, so I, and for those listening as well, I'm sure they are interested in science education, Tell me a bit about it um, and then we might jump into a bit more detail and then we'll try to cover life outside of the course. Yeah, so science education is basically um, for people who want to go on to become either a maths, physics or a chemistry teacher. So it's it's kind of streamed in those three lanes, like you're choosing subjects for your leave insert. So if you choose chemistry and physics, then you're qualified to teach chemistry and physics and leave insert. And if you choose maths and physics, you're qualified to choose maths and physics or to teach that at leave insert and then no matter what you choose to teach you are qualified to teach junior cert maths and junior cycle science and so basically it's, it's really a teaching degree and that kind of teaching is is integrated i think throughout the whole degree 
as well as you learn like a lot more kind of complex content you know so you're learning a lot of hard stuff about maths and science but you're also learning how you teach it a few of the questions that always come up are kind of a quick fire class sizes hours a week and um, so the class size um is so the class size of the whole science education um in my final year now is 15 so there's 15 of us doing the course only 15 of us competing for jobs but um within my physics so i chose physics and maths there's only eight of us that do physics um, and there's then the other seven do chemistry um, so very small class sizes and we get to work like really really close with our lecturers and our tutors and um, so much so that like we get little presents from them all the time and you know like they like we've been taken out for coffees and muffins and treats and a big box of gifts that we get like from uh, different teaching resources we get all the time from our lectures like they're so good to us it was actually something that came up with Connor Myler, who you'll know, who graduated from engineering DC a few years ago. And he said something very, very similar that I don't know my, my I didn't know or don't know my lecturers by professor or, or doctor. It's, it's, you know, first name and it's very personable. And it's, you know, if you need to text me, just text me or ring me if you have an issue or whatever it might be, as opposed to sometimes people might feel that coming to university, it's somewhat removed or so it's good to hear. Um, the, the, if you could jump in then for a moment and then we'll try to cover outside the classroom to give people a sense of continuous assessment which is basically for those that don't know as you move through the semester you, you continuously do assessments and you're marked then um, versus then end of semester exams what's the kind of waiting and this might change year to year so sorry if it, it is changing year to year yeah no it's all good i think the majority of mine have been i think it's a, across the faculty of science and health it tends to be 2080 so that's 20 percent of the little tests or assignments you do that all along and then 80 percent on your final exam and then when you have more like practical um things like say we had um like a spectroscopy workshop or um organic chemistry labs their labs they're very practical and then there's no exam with that it's it's just it's just the practical stuff um in the in the lab itself that you're assessed on and um, your reports and that kind of thing. And then the teaching modules tend to be 100% CA as well. And um, yeah, I don't think I've ever had an exam on, on a, a teaching module uh, as I, now I say teaching because there's loads of different aspects to it, um, but ten, it tends to be more so that the, the science, so the maths, the physics and the chemistry modules that I've done, um, they're, they're split uh, yeah, 80, 20. And the CAs can be anything from like a multiple choice quiz on loop that takes you five minutes to an eight hour written assignment that you do over the course of the semester. And um, so that means eight hours and you have like weeks to do it, you know. Two things. One is to mention for those that don't know what the DC loop system is, it's essentially a, an in-house internal ecosystem where lecturers and students can communicate they can put up lecture notes do quizzes as mary said and you can engage so it's like a, an internal platform the second thing i wanted to ask um, around the course was rough kind of structure and modules as you move through the years work placement that type of thing as you go up through the, the four years of the program yeah so in first year you do like a general science degree pretty much and um, so you do the same as anyone else that's entering um, into the chemical screen stream or the biological stream, I think. And the physics is a bit different. Um, but the only difference is we don't do biology labs in science education. Um, so you'll have a day of chemistry labs a week and a day of physics labs a week. And then you'll have introduction to chemistry, introduction to physics, introduction to biology. And the, the science eds get a special module then instead of our biology labs that we do a module called micro teaching, um, which I think is really good for people to do in their first year. You kind of start by like teaching your peers and it's all like recorded on, on video cameras down in St. Pat Patrick's campus. Um, and then we're sent those to like reflect on and see how we did. And it's funny kind of looking back on those now how far I've come. Um, it's really nice to actually have those videos. They're quite funny. Um, and then you do your final, yeah, you do a maths module that year as well. Sorry, calculus for teachers as well. And that's a year long and then that's it. And as you go into second year then, 
the first half of the the first semester so the first half of the year basically up to Christmas you're really doing a lot of teaching stuff and um, because you go out on a placement for a month after Christmas so I at the end of first year didn't feel ready for that at all I was really actually scared to go out for my placement after Christmas and I think by like three quarters way through the first semester I felt like no I can do this because you like you learn enough things that you can do with students and how to teach and even being com comfortable with the content that you're going to be teaching because it could have been years since you've seen stuff that's on the junior cert maths paper and um, so yeah like really getting to go back and do that before we went out on our placement and then we went out on our placement for a month and DCU um, provides a list and you indicate on that one to ten these are the ones I'd prefer to go to and they kind of assign one and it, it's given to you and you contact your school and they know you're coming and it, it, it kind of works that way it's very like you don't have to sort it out yourself it's really handy especially for your first one um, and then the second semester of that uh, year so second year gets it's quite intense um, because you're kind of catching up on the content knowledge that you didn't really do in the first um, semester so I'd say that's kind of the hardest part of the degree and um, is that that second year gap but if you know it's coming it's not that bad because you can just put your head down and get through it you'll have like a physics lab report you every week a physics or chemistry lab report you every week um, and then like your your regular content you do some nice modules as well and um, and you're still doing chemistry physics and maths and it's at the end of your second year then after your exams that you choose which stream you want to go into so that's whether you want to teach um, physics maths and chemistry choose two of them and which ones of them do you want to teach and um, you start into your will I keep going or am I getting bored? No. No. <laughs> um, I when you start into your third year then, so you have your specialisms and you're kind of sorted out into half the class that does chemistry and maths and half the class that does physics and maths. You can choose um, physics and chemistry, um, but it's just not common. Um, I know one fella's doing it in my year um, and I think it was two years ago since someone did that as well. Um, it, it wouldn't be like, yeah, it wouldn't be very common. So the way that is then is that the timetable is split between chemistry and physics from third year. So like you'll always have one day off a week um, because the other ones will be doing their labs. So say like in second year, we did our labs on a Wednesday for physics and the chemistry people had Wednesday off and then they did their labs on Friday. So we had Friday off. Um, so it was really nice the way, you know, we always had a day off then and a lot of students use that to go into a school and like sub on that day. So because you're doing, so I should have said this before, but because you're doing a science teaching degree from your first year, you're technically allowed to go out and work in a school um, and you get an unqualified rate um, in subbing. I think it's about 38 euro an hour. And um, so it's really nice. It's handy kind of part time job to have, um, especially because it's so, you know, related to what you want to be doing. And um, so, yeah, lots of students did that then in third year because we had the time for it as well. And third year was when we did, I think, more of our kind of the most complex content. So by what I mean by content is like the maths and science that we were learning was quite difficult. So we did um, lots of different things from like quantum mechanics and um, we did electromagnetism, we did calculus of several variables, like I, they're just off the top of my head, but like loads of different kind of quite cl complex, you wouldn't think you'd need them. Um, but they were, I think that was my favorite year. And um, just because I, I found it quite satisfying to um, work so hard at the, the content that we were doing. And it made me feel, feel like I was really able, you know, I had the mastery of the content to, to go on and then teach. Um, and then also a third year. Oh, you do a placement at the start of your third year as well. So you go out for a month um, just before the schools open, you go to the school um, and then you stay there basically just to watch the process of a school kind of starting up and um, like what's involved in planning meetings and 
year heads and who's responsible for you know starting how do we teach this year who's going to design what order we go in and all those different things Um, and it's really good for that reason that you get to see those things and then you're kind of out the door but that one you organize yourself Um, but if you can't organize it yourself DCU will organize something for you but it's to give you that experience of liaising with a school contacting a school um, and then you you know some people have like personal relationships with um you know teachers they might have had or their old principal they go back to their old school um I did that I found it really good quite enjoyable um, and it was really nice and nostalgic to go back um, and then you do Christmas exams that year and you do your end of semester exams that year it's all pretty much the same and um, you do two kind of like other so other degrees might have a, what you might call a thesis or a dissertation or something like that it's basically like a really long paper where you kind of explain something or investigate something and you know you just kind of research and in science education you don't really do that what you do is you do two different um studies or investigations or whatever so you do one in your in your field so mine was physics and we did a physics project a physics labs kind of project thing um, and we ended up being able to still do it with when COVID hit because we were sent out um, a box that had um, like these little Arduino robots and we learned how to like program them and make them do different things and take data and you know manipulate that data then so we were learning a lot through that and like DCU was able to like ship us out the gear to do that back to our homes at the time and then the other study your kind of thesis but not really is um, in lesson study of maths so it's basically where you try and design the perfect lesson in maths and you like research on how you would teach a certain topic keep researching it then you teach it then you reflect on that how would you change it research again teach and that cycle repeats um, throughout the year uh, until the end of that semester and now I'm in my final year um, and I'm not sure what it's supposed to be like. Um, it's a bit different this year, um, but the hours are, yeah, they're really good. Again, we still have that day off. So people are still using that to, to sub in the schools and um, to be a substitute teacher. And we do, yeah, a day of physics labs and a day, they do a day of chemistry labs. So it's, it's nice to see that, you know, you could be coming into a DCU or, any university if you're going to university that may not be able to be fully open um, and it's nice to be able to see that like you know DC has made such an effort to try and make us um, be able to be on campus or not if we choose so for physics labs um, they're not optional we do have to be on campus but in the event of you know someone being sick or a house member being sick or whatever um, that we did them online that person was able to zoom in and like because I had to do it one week when I got tested and it was like it was pretty much the same like nearly the same only I wasn't able to do a small part of it and um, that involved it, so, some equipment but uh, it was really good and yeah it's just nice to see that you know oh we have um, a lecture I had my last lecture today actually that's where I was coming from was um that lecture that we do it's kind of like a workshop but we're on campus for it so you know like DCU wanted us to be on campus to be able to do that that one lecture and he has it set up so that you can come in if you want to come in but if you want to do it on zoom you can and he teaches to both and um, so yeah it's just really like you know they're making an effort um, and I think it's really nice to see a few things to maybe just uh, query there one it was back a couple of minutes but you said on the St. Pat's campus so for those that don't know there's a number of academic campuses your course is taught on Glasnevin St. Pat's or both both yeah mo majority on Glasnevin but we do we, in normal times would have a lecture on St. Pat's once a week Another thing that I just want to pick up on because, and this is across all courses, by the way, but people come in and they mightn't have um, as much experience or they're not as strong on a particular subject, whatever that may be. In terms of support or help or tutorials, depending on the subject, they're available. And if so, kind of how do they work if you need a bit of support in a subject, particularly earlier on? 
yeah so it, it kind of depends on the module like most of them um i would kind of in normal times again live in this little place called the math learning center so it's like a room in the library where there's like phd students and uh, or master's students and they just give you free basically free grinds with your maths now they can't help you with your your assignment or your exact homework they can't give you the answer but they can help you get there and um, so they're really good and i honestly if you're going into any science um program or anything that would need maths in dcu i can't recommend enough that you'd go there like i just can't understand why people don't like i need to actually stop telling people until i've left because it's it's so good like and i i didn't even know really this was a thing before i got in and then my lecturers were harping on about it, like oh you should really go it's so good for you and i was like whatever and like as soon as I went through the second like the second set of exams where it was the maths one I was like so glad that I had been you know even just pop in there like I remember sometimes just popping in and being like look I haven't a clue what's going on in this module we just started with me from the start like halfway through the year I just picked it up and I ended up getting a really good grade in it because I worked on it in the maths learning center a lot like I just went into them I was like I just don't know where to start and they'll like they'll take it from the basics and really teach you one-to-one -one. so they're really good that's exactly what these conversations are about things that you often you might heard about or the prospectus don't necessarily tell you but when you get there and current students like yourself are able to say definitely go to a or definitely go to b or make sure that you do so so that's part of it. one or two questions um that have come in so thank you for the questions is somebody has asked what's it like living uh, with new people each year if that if that has been the case yeah so uh, I've been living in student accommodation the whole time I've been here and it's really nice to get to li live with you know new people every year you get to a new mix I don't think I've ever really had roommates that I didn't get on with and um, but I think yeah this year I'm, I'm loving it you know it's really nice to I kind of feel like I have a little home up here as well um Sinead McCrowan said, who you'll know well, hoping Mary will take up a second full-time job in the Maths Learning Centre in semester two. <laughs> I, I don't know the about students, that. The students would ask for that too, would they? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Sinead. Um, and I think you might have answered this already, but another question came in. How many people would usually be let into the course? Um, so how many people? So there would normally be about, um, I think it was under 30. So it was about 26. Um, at the start when we started out and then people kind of swapped into different degrees or um, dropped out or you know different things just the way life happens and um, especially when you're such a small group you know and um, it's more noticeable but I think it was around 26 um, and some of them I think swapped into just general science because they didn't want to teach. I want to, if it's okay, and I know you're uh, time-wise, I'm just a few minutes left, but okay, explore outside the classroom. So uh, I know you've been, and you continue to be a fantastic student ambassador, which is just one portion of outside the classroom, but give people a sense of what your journey has been to date, what you've gotten up to, and maybe some opportunities and experiences outside the classroom. Yeah, I, I think I was quite involved in college, you know, the whole way through, but not in the way most people are, which is um, clubs and societies. Um, I didn't like, as, although I loved and I really tried to go to events when I could, my course was just so busy that I didn't feel like um, I had a chance. And um, because at quite some events, you know, they're like five o'clock in the evening or, you know, one o'clock during lunchtime or whatever it is. And it's like, I could be in labs and I, I could be the only hour I get to eat in a day and I'm going to eat. And, um, you know, it's a very busy course, so that's the way it works out. But I somehow managed then in the evenings that, um, you know, I did I did a few things. I did a lot for the SU and um, I stood up in the first class rep council meeting. Well, first I put myself forward for the, the class representative. It's basically, basically, yeah, you're just representing your class like in like in secondary school, but in in a in a bigger, more formal, I think, setting and they have a meeting. Um, where they elect a, a first year officer. So basically I was the class rep and the first year officer. So I was kind of the liaison between the SU and all of the first years when I was in first year. And so that, I think I kind of put myself in the deep end there and I, I got to know DC very quickly. And um, I was a student helper that year. So I volunteered at the open days. And um, 
like I think that shows you how much I really instantly fell in love with DCU and um, and then you know I did I did a lot more I think I was the secretary yeah I was a secretary of the CRC which is the class rep council all the class representatives that come together and they discuss different issues and you know how can they um you know project the student voice or you know really give voice to student issues and yeah I was the one writing down all that taking the notes and uh, having the, some important discussions I guess um and it was really good to know like what's going on in DCU and what's what's happening and what because like although it is somewhere that I deeply love it's it's always trying to improve itself which is another thing that I think is really cool like stuff you don't even think of like the SU will just fix it and you're like I didn't even realize that was a problem do you know what I mean or like that actually that that goes across DCU as a whole because I feel like there's always something under construction it's always trying to improve and get bigger and, and get better so yeah um I can't remember what the question was yeah no that it's <laughs> funny because I, I was actually looking at something else earlier on as part of work unrelated to this conversation on Wednesday the 9th or sorry the 9th of December was written down um, and it's, it's you know, I'll get to my point now in a minute, but this time, this day last year, if you're watching this live, anyway, this day last year, we had our academic scholarship event, which has, oh, yeah. I think about, I think last year, about 780 or so people all in our Helix Theatre, where we get to acknowledge people who got academic and achieve academic excellence, as well as, as you know, teachers, staff, the deans, the president of our university. Um, and when you were mentioning out things that you did, you actually pretty much ran that event as well um, that night, which is obviously a very prestigious event. Um, and I think you, you've done lots of work um, and supported us, as you always do anyway, but supported us in our role here in the student recruitment office. So I guess you mentioned it's an incredibly busy course, and by the sounds of it, it is, but at the same time, you and I'm sure many of your classmates still do manage to do and help and get involved and inform, and as you said, help the university pretty much evolve and um, the other thing before i ask you the last question is that for those that don't know the, the su is students union or the, the re they represent the student body essentially and if you have anything an issue or a challenge or you know the timing of your lectures whatever it may be mary and others are class reps you feed it into them and they get the opportunity to feed it back up higher and it pretty much and you'll notice mary goes right up to the president of the university depending on the situation and um, that that may be there so there is that kind of very much connected spirit um right across the board one thing that i always and as i asked in Sinead in the last conversation always try to finish up each conversation with is if you're doing it all again and i know you're still very much in the thick of it but looking back to those that are listening or probably listening in, in the kind of decision making time of what will i do next in college type of a uh, mindset anything jumped to mind was everything brilliant something you try differently yeah, I do think I, this sounds bad, but I would probably focus a little bit less on my academics. I think I put too much pressure on myself um, for like little quizzes that didn't really mean much. Um, and I thought they did at the time, you know, and um, I think I, I just relax a bit more, especially in first year. I was, I really got just overwhelmed um, and I would just relax a bit more because it actually wasn't that bad like it just genuinely wasn't um you know I don't know I'd, I'd, I'd use that time then to do the things I know it sounds like Sinead so I don't want to be repeating it but to do the things that like I didn't really give myself an opportunity to do so say like I joined different societies I joined drama I joined sober sock I joined the scuba society um, and I gave everything a go but not really like only a small amount to like each little thing or whatever I, I joined other ones I just can't remember like I did the DCU 24-hour broadcast which is an event to raise money for charity where they broadcast basically a tv stream I've gone to drama open mics like I, I've gone to little events but I've never really um participated in a society fully and like kind of reap the, the benefits of the societies and clubs in DCU and I wish I could could have done that a bit more and um, I kind of had a very um I don't know I, I don't know what kind of word I would use to describe it but it was a it's not a superficial relationship but I didn't really get involved as much as I could in the societies more so in the SU and my course and yeah while I wouldn't take away what I did for the SU that was so enjoyable and um, I would just maybe calm myself a little bit especially in first year with the little quizzes and stuff because they don't amount up to almost any of your grade 
It's interesting. I completely make sense because I think I was talking to Faith on another episode on these few weeks ago, and she was saying that she got too involved in club and societies, and a result academics, um, she was kind of chasing a bit. So I guess it's all about, I guess, experience and or the balance of uh, yeah. everything. But I, I guess it's important to note, and we just finished. And thanks for your time as well for everybody watching too. Uh, it's important to note the massive work that you do do for us in the student recruitment team, but also from the university. Uh, as a whole and I know you're always praised by Professor Derek who is our president here uh, amongst other staff members so really just an appreciation for everything that you do do um, and also for your 20 odd nearly 30 minutes of time um, today and it is really appreciated before I let you go because I know you always do support us in everything that we do here in the student recruitment office for DCU but if anybody does want to get more information you're watching us live now or you're watching us back on record please just get in touch at studenthelp at dcu.ie um, um, students like uh, Mary and Sinead that we spoke to last are always willing to help um, and assist and um, I guess advise as best they can so um, thank you for everything no problem thanks for having me yeah and the best of luck uh, don't be too busy if that's even possible <laughs> I'll try Try my best. <laughs> Do your best. Okay. Uh, have a great Christmas and thanks for joining us. Same to you. Thanks, Emil. Um, just before we wrap up today's conversations, um, and again, we had two um, unique insights from um, two current students uh, here in DCU, Sinead, uh, a couple of minutes ago, um, we spoke about Health and Society, and Mary, that we just had a conversation with there about science education. Just before I wrap up, to let you know, there's loads of ways of getting in touch, but this university is very special and unique in lots of different ways. Uh, one is the people and what they do provide uh, from the student side of things and the staffing side of things. The second is the places um, that we have the, the academic campuses that are on offer unique experiences across all of our campuses that are there. The programs that we're, we speak about here each and every week are unique in terms of the world-class exposure that you get. And then the last thing, but not least, is the perspective that you do get, uh, both perspective internally in terms of what the university affords you, but also um, the, the trust and the open environment that you get to project yourself and your perspective, no matter your background. So all very important to this university. Uh, just before I leave everybody and say thank you, just a reminder again, there's plenty of more information online. You will get us all the time at studenthelp at dcu.ie. My name has been Johnny Cooper. It's been a pleasure to join you uh, the last couple of weeks. I hope they are valuable in some way. And as I said, please do stay in touch. We're always here to help and assist in this amazing university. Um, take care, everybody. Uh, have a great Christmas and we'll speak to everybody really, really soon.